Salut Yetan et bienvenue au Corpo aujourd'hui. Alors, let me explain what we're going to do today then everyone. Hope you're all safe and well. So, so far, we have looked at all the vocabulary for the ideal holiday, which I've said is so important. Some of you will be asked this on your speaking exam. You could all be asked it for your writing exam and you will definitely, along some point in those two exams, be asked about an ideal something, your ideal weekend, what you would like to do. So it is a GCSE must know this language, but also the grammar, which we really focused on last lesson when we went through the conditional tense masterclass. And I told you this is a GCSE must know to get the marks that you guys want and you guys deserve because some real talent in our French cohort. You need to be able to use the conditional tense. You need to study it. So that's what we've done so far. I've talked a lot about the writing and speaking and needing this. It might also come up in the reading and listening the exam, which is the two skills we're going to focus on today. We're going to be looking at people describing their ideal holidays, <laughs> using our vocabulary to see what you do. We're going to do a reading and listening on this. So loads for us to cover today. Let's start as we always do. You know what to do. Dans mes petits, s'il vous plaît, vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Dans les cahiers bleus, inventez le date pour moi. Copier le titre pour moi. Et c'est le même contrôle de post-it que le cordonnier. Donc, don't look back in your book. I told you these are six must-know phrases. Comment dire? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six. On y va, mes petits. Put me on pause as you're doing that. When you think you're ready, recommencez le vidéo. Courage, on y va. Hello, mes petits. If you're listening to me now, then you've got the date and title in your book and you've had to go at control de post-it. It's the same as last lesson. And I told you last lesson, you've got to know these. And if you didn't, I told you to go back and look at the vocabulary on the playlist. Let's hope you know these now. So I'll come to that in a second. Let's go through what we're doing today. Today, we're going to test you in a different way on ideal holidays. We're going to be looking at a reading and listening. So I'm going to start with a vocab slash grammar test. I'm going to test you on the conditional. How well did you study it? Did you do the homework? Did you do the must knows? Have you revised the endings? We'll find out in a second. We're going to do a test on that. Then we're going to do a reading, a really tough reading from the higher tier. You're going to see someone describing their ideal holidays. They're going to use the vocabulary we've learned, but they're obviously going to put some different phrases and different vocab in. So your real test of your reading skills. Then we're going to do a listening activity where you're going to listen to four people talk about their ideal holidays. So this is a great test for you today. A lot to learn. First thing, do not continue with this lesson unless you get six out of six on our control de posti today. It's got to be solid. Did you know these? So, numéro un, if I had the choice, and still haven't corrected that mistake, if I had the choice, um, is what you need. Comment dire? C'est si j'avais le choix. If I was having the choice, I want to see this on your writing assessments. I want to hear this when we do a speaking assessment at Christmas. You've got to use it. Hello, my dream holidays. You say my holidays of dreams. Guys, holidays is always plural. It's feminine plural. So you need the right my, me, me, vacances de rêve is what you need. Numéro toi, if I could decide. You say in French, if I was able to decide, qui est, si je pouvais décider. Excellent, if you got that. All right, we talked about the two ways to do the conditional tense. I would like to go, c'est je voudrais aller. I would go, it's an irregular, j'irai, with an A-I-S ending. Remember, that's what means would. I'll be testing you on these endings today. Do you know them? If finalement, there would be, il y a, as there is. Il y avait, as there was. Il y aura, as there will be. Il y aurait is there would be. Right guys, mark out of six for this. If you haven't got them, go back two lessons ago and just watch and go through this vocabulary again. Or if you don't want to do the lesson, just go and memorize for five minutes. Go on this section, Ideal Holidays. Just revise it, get it back in your heads because you will learn a lot more today. If you're happy with your post-it note challenge, on va continuer avec un contrôle. We're not going to go straight into the test. Let me explain. Allo mes petits, avant le contrôle de grammaire, on va faire du réchauffage. Alors, you know you're going to be tested on the conditional tense in the next activity. So before that, I just wanted to warm you up. You've played verbal volleyball a lot. We've even done it in lockdown a lot. So you know you've got to use your phone to time yourself for saying 30 
to 40 seconds is the completion time. If you're in between 30 and 40, you've done really, really well. Mais c'est différent aujourd'hui. Qu'est-ce que j'ai fait? Alors, je vais expliquer. Pas le premier colonne, c'est normal. Uh, c'est normal. J'irai, I would go. Je voyagerai, I would travel. Je logerai, I would stay. Voilà, facile. Le problème, c'est 6 jusqu'à 15. J'ai pris. Le prénom, le je, tu, il, elle. Donc, il faut dire le français. Il faut regarder, oups, le fin du verbe. Et il faut trouver la bonne réponse. Par exemple, and in an AIT, that's the pattern for il, elle, on. So, he would, she would, or one word. And there we go, would stay. Et voilà, so, six, he or she would stay. Logerions, ions is the new form, we would stay. See what I've done? See ce qu'il faut faire. Donc, you know how this works, guys. You'll need to put me on pause, prepare. Then on your phones, set a stopwatch, un chronomètre, voilà. Et see what you can do. I want you to get in between 30 to 40 seconds. So prepare and then start your timer and go for it and see what you can do. This is really going to help you when it comes to our vocab test next. Alors, put me on pause. See what time you get. Toi, deux, un. Allez, on y va. Alors mes petits, maintenant c'est exactement la même activité, mais j'ai changé l'anglais, la position de l'anglais et le français. Donc il faut dire français, anglais, fran pardon, anglais, français, anglais, français, anglais, français, rapidement. Same as last time, why don't you try this with no prep? Put me on pause, start your chronomètre, your stopwatch, and remember 30 to 40 seconds is the target. Bon courage mes petits, toi, deux, un, allez on y va. Hello, mes petits. Donc, we've had a bit of a revision of our patterns. We've had a bit of a look at the condition and some key verbs. Let's put you to the test. On your sheet, you'll have a copy of this. Je vais expliquer ce qu'il faut faire en français. Et voilà, mes petits. Donc, c'est comme mon contrôle de vocabulaire, mais c'est un peu différent parce que c'est un contrôle de grammaire et de conditionnel aussi. Il y a deux parties. La première partie, c'est ici. Il dit compléter avec les fins de verbe de conditionnel. Donc ici, qu'est-ce qui manque? C'est les fins de verbe qui veut dire en anglais the verb endings for the conditional. So we know our first one. Alors je vais vous aider. Hein? Le premier, c'est A, I, S. Voilà. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Le version pour tu, pour il, elle, on, pour nu, pour vu, pour il, elle. Qu'est-ce que c'est? One mark for each of these, six marks in total for our first section. You need to know these off by heart. So absolutely, yeah. No looking in your book at the endings and then writing them in. What's the point? This is a test. I want to test you on this to see what you know. You've got to know all these verb endings for your GCSE. So test yourself now. If you don't know them, it's six endings. Spend some time learning them and we'll come back to it. Alors, ça c'est partie 1. Pour partie 2, c'est ici. C'est comme normalement, il faut compléter les phrases avec les mots dans la boîte. Mais attention, j'ai changé quelque chose. Je vous ai donné les infinitifs nager, voyager. Donc, il faut mettre les verbes dans un espace, mais aussi il faut conjuguer les verbes au conditionnel. Donc, same as always. The endings on the verbs in yellow, they're going to help you out. So it's je. So what's that ending? So it can only be, it can only be one in there. Easy. I've given you the first answer. But for voyager et nager, what's different? The infinitives. Donc il faut les conjuguer au conditionnel. Usual endings up here in the pattern to help you out. Aujourd'hui, pour les défis additionnels, Vous avez une phrase très difficile à traduire. We'll break this up. I'll give you one mark for this, another for this, another for this. Three in total. Nine will be la note de mission aujourd'hui. Listen, I want you to do this properly. No point in like cheating or looking just one thing up to get the mark. It doesn't matter what your mark is. No one's going to know what your mark is. I'm never going to see this. So it's a test for you to test your learning. And this is how you get good. I used to do this to myself all the time, writing out verb endings for French and Spanish when I was learning that. You need to do exactly the same thing. Test yourself. If you don't have nine, 
go away and do a bit of revision. If you've got over nine, that's a really good place to be. You should be proud. Alors, donc, c'est tout, tout le monde. Je vais vous donner. C'est plus compliqué aujourd'hui. Quatre minutes. So, put four minutes on your phone timer. See what you can do in this four minutes. When your timer goes off, restart the video. Recommencez le video. Et je vais faire les réponses. Bon courage, mes petits. Put me on pause now. On y va. Hello, mes petits. If you're listening to me now, you've had your four minutes on this control and you're ready for answers. What do you reckon? C'était difficile, non? Alors, donc, n'oubliez pas que la note d'admission de jeu de tuy, c'est 9. 9 sur 15, c'est génial. Alors, donc, prenez les stylos rouges, mes petits, pour corriger euh, les efforts. Et on y va. Let's go for our first bit. The endings are a GCC must know. You need to know them as well as I do. And it is easy. It goes AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. Voilà. One mark for each of these for me, please. Voilà. Donc, six notes possibles ici. La deuxième partie, il fallait compléter les phrases en utilisant les mots dans la boîte ici. Donc, on y va. Je dans un gîte à la campagne toute seule, se tranquille. Alors donc, un gîte veut dire uh, like a holiday home in the countryside. So what do you do to a holiday home in the countryside? You stay in it. Je logerai dans une gîte à la campagne toute seule. Remember, loger is about to stay. You can also use rester. So I would stay in like a holiday home in the countryside alone. Se serait tranquille. This would be peaceful. Think of the English word tranquil. Two marks for this. Alors, numéro 7. Il y a des feux d'artifice sur la plage tous les soirs. Nu, ça. Alors, so you've got nu is your first clue. And then il y, we know it's il y a. What's that uh, conditional tense phrase? Il y aurait. There would be des feux d'artifice, veut dire fireworks, sur la plage tous les soirs. On the beach every night, nu. Donc, nu, c'est le cible. Donc, que, quel est le fin du verbe? Si c'est nu, c'est celui-ci. Nous adorerions ça. Listen to my pronunciation of that. Adorerions. You need to say it all. It looks crazy. It sounds crazy. That's how you say it. We would love that. Right, guys. Let's do some exam technique. <coughs> let's get rid of the ones we've used already. Voilà, voilà. I'm going to use that. Et voilà. So, we've got our two verbs that we have to conjugate left. And we've got serré with the A-I-E-N-T. Let's have a little look. Alors, donc, numéro 8. Comment tes vacances idéales? Now, the highlighting's there to help you out. This is plural. Les vacances are plural. Ideal is plural. All of this is plural. It's saying how something your ideal holidays. So you want to say in French, how would they be? Which in English I'd probably translate to what would, would they be like? How would they be? So a verb to be, and then you need the ending for plural. Um, you need the verb conjugation for they, it was else. So it would be, comment seraient tes vacances idéales? How would be your ideal holidays? This is what this says. Excellent if you got this one. That means the last two. Are the two U, il faut conjuguer la verbe. Alors, donc, elle avec les poissons tropicaux et elle, pluriel, avec une organisation. Donc, c'est elle. It's got to be this verb here, nager. Remember, regular ER verb. We keep the infinitive, so you keep the ER in the end. And all you need to do is add the right ending to say would, which is all up here. Elle nagerait avec les poissons tropicaux. Facile. Well done if you got that. Numéro 10. Elles. Avec une organisation. We know it's voyager. What's that ending? If it's L, plural they, it's A-I-E-N-T. Keep the infinitive. Elles voyagent rayon. Avec une organisation. C'est ce qu'il faut faire. Alors, bon effort ici, mes petits. Give yourself a mark out of 15. You've got the extra challenge. We broke it into three. This is what you should have. So, if I had the choice, in French, you change that to if I was having the choice. Si j'avais le choix, je voyagerais avec mes amis. Or you could have mes copains. Or you could have the feminine, mes amis, mes copines. Ce serait mieux que voyager avec ma famille. A beautiful Jesus sentence here. I'll give you one mark if you've nailed si j'avais le choix. I'll give you one mark up to here. Yeah. And then ce serait mieux que. I'll give you another mark for that. That's lovely. 
it would be better than and then another mark for voyager avec ma famille for possible for our extra challenge don't worry if you didn't get that it's just for fun give yourself a mark out of 15 i need nine today guys if you've got over nine <laughs> bon effort sinon if not why don't you go back to last lesson, have a little look at the conditional and practice the endings. Make sure you can get to nine and see what you can do. If you're over nine, bon effort. Let's see what you can do. We move on to some reading and listening. Hello, mes petits. Comme j'ai déjà dit, hein? today we're focusing on reading and listening, looking at ideal holidays. Look your hand out for today with our text and the activities. Donc, je vais expliquer ce qu'il faut faire. Guys, scroll down to the second page of what I've put on Frog for you today. And I'll go through the activities one by one by one. But I'm going to go through them all in French. Donc, écoutez-moi attentivement. Et voilà, ici, vous avez la première activité. Oui, c'est une activité de lecteur. Mais je vous ai donné une texte avec les mots qui manquent. Voilà. Comment compléter le texte? Alors, il faut écouter... Tibolt et Mathilde et la conversation. Comment écouter Tibolt et Mathilde? Il faut visiter le site web ici. Voilà. Et il va vous demander, peu en code, copier et coller la code ici. Voilà. Et avec ça, tu peux écouter la conversation. Il faut écouter et il faut écrire les mots qui manquent dans l'espace ici. Voilà. Donc, activité 1, il faut compléter le texte pour moi, les enfants. Voilà. In class, I probably play it you twice. You're in charge today. Happy days. You can pause it. You can rewind it. You can make sure it's absolutely perfect. There's not cheating. Like, that's, that's, it's all down to you. You might want to listen to it twice and be really mean with yourself. You might want to keep pausing and checking. Whatever works for you, mes petits. Compléter le texte, ça c'est activité 1. Activité 2. C'est ici, après avoir complété le texte, il faut chercher dans le texte pour trouver les dix choses que j'ai écrites ici. Ce sont les verbes euh, au conditionnel. Donc, comment dire « I would like »,« I would read »,« it wouldn't be busy », etc. Comment dire en français « chercher dans le texte pour ça ». Et la troisième activité ici... J'ai huit phrases. Et parmi les huit phrases, cinq, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq phrases sont vraies. Et donc, trois phrases, un, deux, trois phrases sont incorrectes. Il faut lire la phrase et il faut, il faut décider tandis que c'est vrai ou si c'est faux. Voilà. Décider vrai ou faux pour chaque phrase pour moi. Et la défi additionnel. So, tough today, our extra challenge. There's two parts. Thibaut is asking you four questions. What are the questions asking you? Et finalement, nice open-ended extra challenge. Can you answer these questions? See what you can do. Do it in the time limit and see what you can do for these four questions. Alors, donc, j'ai expliqué to you. If you're not sure what to do on this task, just rewind the video, listen to the explanation again and see if you can work it out and you know what to do. <laughs> I want you all to do the first three activities. I'm going to give you a whopping 10 minutes, 10 minutes pour faire ça. Je pense que ça c'est assez. So, on your phones, got to practice my writing with a mouse. On your phones, put a timer for 10 minutes. Get on this activity and get listening and completing the text. When your alarm goes off, 10 minutes is done. You should have done activities one, two, and three. Restart this video and we'll look at the text together and I'll go through the answers. Alors, vous avez 10 minutes. See you in 10, guys. Au revoir. Alors, mes petits, if you listen to me now, you've had your 10 minutes and you're now ready for the answers. Let's go from one by one. Voilà. Ici, c'est la version complète du texte. Donc, have a little read through, look at your text, look at this one, make sure you've got everything. A really nice text here. We're going to break it down in the next activity. So, put me on pause, check what you've got, see if you've got the verb endings right. Did you hear the difference with reposerait, serait, ici, oh, attends, ici, serait, reposerait. Did you get these verb endings right? Did you manage to do the conditional tense? Have a little look and mark your work up. Put me on pause as you're doing that.
Alors mes petits, donc, la première activité, c'était de trouver les verbes et les phrases clés ici. Let's go for it. So where would you stay? You logerais-tu? Or they could have said you resterais-tu? I would relax myself. Je me reposerai. Remember, this is a reflexive verb. You have a little bit extra to say myself. This happens more in French than it does in English. But we do have it in English. I brush my teeth is what you say. For example, I would do is an irregular verb. Fair is always irregular. Je ferai, F-E-R. I would benefit from, je profiterai. So, you know what profit is, or if you study business, hopefully you know what profit is. Um, it doesn't mean financially here, I would benefit from. Profit in French, the verb profiter means like to benefit from. So, when you're on holiday and people say, oh, you're on holiday, oh, do you like our town? You're like, oh, yeah, I love it, it's great. They'll say, oh, profiter des vacances, like profit from your holidays, which basically means like have a nice time on your holidays. Love that verb. I would like, ici, c'est je voudrais. I would read, je lirai. It wouldn't be busy. Il n'y aura pas beaucoup de monde. So here we go. This is a lot tougher, this one. Beaucoup de monde. Le monde is the world. And remember, tu le monde is how you say everyone in French. Tu le monde means all the world. It's how you say everyone. So it wouldn't be busy. In French, they say il n'y aurait pas beaucoup de monde. There wouldn't be loads of people. And then finally, that wouldn't bother me. Ça ne me dérangerait pas. Déranger is not to be deranged, Reese Tanner. Déranger is to bother someone. So if you go in a hotel, do you know like that little plastic thing you get, do not disturb, and you put it on your door handle to stop whatever the maid's busting in. In French, that says ne pas déranger. Do not disturb. Déranger is a verb to disturb. Perfect. Right, guys, give yourself a mark out of eight for our first activity. Alors, activité de mes petits. Remember, we had to find our five correct sentences. So I've got the text next to it. We can talk through it and have a little look and pick out some language. I'm sorry the text is so small. It was the only way to fit it on the slide. Alors, question 1. Ideally, Mathilde would stay in the caravan. So let's use our exam techniques. Where are they talking about this? Here's the question. Où logerais-tu? Where would you stay? And Mathilde says, voyons, je crois que je logerais dans un simple caravan à la montagne. Donc, numéro 1, c'est correct. Voilà, bizarre. I don't know how many of you would have that ideal holiday in a caravan. Imagine if you do, you've never been in a caravan because I've got, well, I used to go to one in Wales uh, and it was awful. <laughs> numéro 2, she would travel with her boyfriend or maybe on her own. So, you can find the question first. Avec qui voyagerais-tu? With who would you travel? Elle dit, je voyagerais avec mon copain ou bien seul si il était occupé. Voilà, c'est vrai. So we know, petit ami, petit ami, petit copain, petit copine, his boyfriend, girlfriend. We can just say copain et copine aussi. Numéro 3. She would listen to the radio and watch TV. Here's our question. Qu'est-ce que tu y ferais? Remember this e means there. What would you do there? She says, allez bien. Je me reposerai. I would relax myself. Je ferai des randonnées, peut-être aussi de canoë et kayak. Je profiterai du silence et je lirai aussi. Je ne regarderai pas mon portable qu'une fois par jour. This is faux. She doesn't talk about the radio or TV. Um, et voilà, she would not read. Celui-ci, voilà, c'est faux aussi parce qu'elle dit je lirai. I would read. Voilà. Alors, et 5, 6, 7, 8. Donc, question 5. She would do some outdoor activities. Oh, yeah. She said, je ferai des randonnées et peut-être aussi du canoë et kayak. C'est si, c'est vrai. Oh, <laughs> numéro 6. She would go on guided tours and see shows. It says, c'est faux. What does she say? Um, voilà. It's down here. Nice. It's a great piece of French. Et on n'y aurait pas beaucoup de monde. There won't be a lot of people. Et il n'y aurait ni visite guidée, ni spectacle, j'ai horreur de ça. So, il n'y aurait, is there wouldn't be, and we looked at this in module 4, talking about our towns, ni, ni, means neither, nor. So there'd be neither guided visits, nor spectacles. Now, you will see ni, ni in your, in your reading and your listening. Make sure you know it means neither, nor. Alors, numéro 7, she would check her phone only once a day, ça, C'est vrai, voilà. Je ne regarderai mon portable que. Whenever you see ne and que, 
this means only so I'd only check it once a day that sounds weird doesn't it but Mr Scott from history he only checks his phone like once a day because he's on our group chat and he, he's ridiculous at it et finalement numéro 8 she's looking for peace and tranquility c'est vrai ici she says here it would be calm simply perfect it wouldn't be very luxurious but that wouldn't bother me I would want to spend holidays like that. Voilà, donc, give yourself a mark out of eight for this activity, mes petits. Voilà. Et voilà, right guys, if you got into the extra challenge, bon effort ici. This is what the questions were asking you in English. If you've had a go at answering them, even better. Bon effort, mes petits. Alors, mes petits, right guys, so, you've read through a text about ideal holidays now. You know <laughs> that one of the more challenging parts of our exam, c'est l'examen d'écoute, that listening exam is, is really, really challenging. And, and the only way to get good is to practice it, which is what we're going to do now. Alors, donc, maintenant, on va faire une activité d'écoute. Comme la dernière activité, il faut visiter le site de web ici. Et quand il vous demande un code, il faut copier et coller la code Ici, voilà. Donc, avec l'enregistrement, on va écouter 1, 2, 3, 4 personnes qui vont parler de leurs vacances idéales. Il faut compléter le tableau ici en anglais. Donc, le premier boîte, lodgings, pardon, lodgings veut dire where they stay. Donc, hôtel, camping, gîte, etc., il faut faire um, où ils restent en anglais, mes petits. Companions. I don't know why they've used this type of English. Ça veut dire who you go on holiday with, your companion. Donc, avec ma famille, avec mon petit ami, avec uh, mes peaux, etc. Activity, activities. Well, hopefully you don't need that translating. Anything else? Autre chose? Any other detail you can think of? What else they'd be? What they do? Et finalement, impression. Est-ce qu'ils aiment ça ou ils n'aiment pas ça? As much information as possible on all of this, guys. So, that's what you need to do. Complete the table in English. Now, in class, we listen to this twice because that's what you do on the exam. You can listen to it twice yourself or you can just listen to it a few times. Make sure you've got it right. Get used to the language completely down to you. I really like lockdown because you're able to do that. Or as you can't do that in class, you can listen to it again, you can pause it, you can think, you can really get exposed to that French. So it's completely down to you guys. You listen to it how you want. On the next few slides, we've got the transcript. So put me on pause now, see what you can do on the proper listening. You've got this grid um, on your handout for today. And then when you're ready, restart the video, I'll show you the transcript and we'll look at the answers. Bon courage, on y va. Allo mes petits, here is our transcription. Put me on pause. Read through, check your answers from the listening, see what you've got. If you want to change any answers, that's fine. Do it now. Put me on pause and read through Lily and Saba. Allo mes petits, et la deuxième, maintenant, toi et quatre, même chose à faire. Put me on pause, read them through, check your work and see what you've got. Allo mes petits, so there's a lot to talk through, I'm just going to whack the answers up. This is what you should have, um, give yourself a mark for each one of them, the more detail the better mes petits. Don't worry if you don't have everything, put me on pause, mark up your work now looking at this today. Allo mes petits, bon effort aujourd'hui guys. I know you will have worked really hard today on this, a lot of French to get through. We have looked at the conditional, we've looked at the language and today you've seen it in action in some reading and listening. I hope you're really happy with your efforts and you got a lot out of this. You can still develop. This is a GCC must know. And I know most of you will be back in school for one day a week and, and I worry about your, your options and you guys keeping on top of everything you have to do. So all these lessons are up on Monday for you to work through. Your homework still counts. You still need to work hard at home, year 10. Take this as a chance to develop your skills because in year 11 you'll need them. Alors, pour les devoirs, this is your homework. It's all about the conditional tense. You've also got the conditional tense video and the explanation to help you out. You've got to master this. So make sure your daily tests are done. Make sure 
your translation is done and you've revised the conditional tense so you know it because next time when I see you all we'll be going straight in and they'll be expected to know this so work hard on the homework guys work hard at home on your option subjects hope to see some of you in school soon alors donc merci mes petits et au revoir à la prochaine fois